Jim Henson, American puppeteer, artist, cartoonist, inventor, director, producer, and if that wasn't enough, also the creator of something called The Muppets. I know, awe-inspiring, right? Now, as a new YouTube creator, sometimes it could be a bit daunting to try to find your audience. Sometimes you feel like what you're producing and what you're making isn't going to be worth it. And that feeling alone could be pretty... I don't know, discouraging I guess would be the word. But when I start feeling like that, I like to look back at my creative heroes. People like Walt Disney and Jim Henson, you know, George Lucas, people who took imagination and made it something awe-inspiring that gets remade time and time again. And other times, I like to look at their original work. Now, why am I doing this? Sometimes it's a good idea to understand that not everyone is just born brilliant. Fact of the matter is, we all have to practice and get better at it. And Jim Hansen, while brilliant, wasn't an exception to this. So let's go ahead and take a look at five pieces of his original work. Some of it, I will admit, kind of mature, kind of dark, and others, well, you could see he was going through an experimental phase. <laughs> Sit back, grab yourself a popcorn, and let's settle in and get lost in the Muppety goodness. Now, if you're a fan of early puppeteering, you've probably already looked up this topic before, and hell, it might even be the reason why you found this video in the first place. In which case, I applaud you. People like you are keeping my channel alive, or at the very least, you know, going. But if you have looked it up, one of the things you've probably seen the most is something called the Wilkins Coffee Commercial. Being one of Jim Henson's earliest works, it stars two Muppets, one obsessed with the Wilkins coffee brand, and the other one, not so much a fan. Now what makes this one stand out is the fact that how sadistic and dark the humor gets in these commercials. The main Muppet, Wilkins, is very, let's just say he's very enthusiastic about getting people to like Wilkins coffee. And Wilkins, the other less fortunate Muppet, is usually the brunt of the joke, often being on the receiving end of, let's say, very painful punchlines. But hey, I'm not going to ruin the joke by explaining it. Check it out. Okay, buddy, what do you think of Wilkins coffee? I never tasted it. Now what do you think of Wilkins? We're here to persuade people to drink more Wilkins coffee. What's the club for? To get their attention. You know, people who don't drink Wilkins coffee just blow up sometimes. Oh, that's a lot of... See what I mean? Want some Wilkins coffee with your strawberry shortcake? Can't say that I do. You can't say that you don't, either. On guard, salute Wilkins coffee. But I don't drink Wilkins coffee. Some learn, some don't. Some learn, some don't. Ken Nordine, probably best known for his spoken jazz albums, was one of Jim Henson's influences and among that was renowned for his smooth voice and his very rhythmic approach to the spoken word. Now, most people wouldn't recognize him on the street by his face or his appearance, but more than likely if you're a 90s baby, or hell, fan of anything retro, you've probably heard his voice once or twice. And on one very special occasion, him and Jim Henson put together something very unique called Where Hunger Comes From. Now before I show you this clip, be aware that it's going to be a little bit off-putting in a very uncanny valley sort of way. It really does show his age. It's also very relatable. Just listening to it makes me want to go grab a bite to eat. <laughs> Prepare to be weirded out in the best way possible.
Have you ever been hungry in the middle of the night? That happens to me sometimes. And then I go raid the icebox. For example, the other night I did that. We had some leftover Welsh rarebit. I found that and a couple of crackers and a piece of celery and an olive. And I sat down in the middle of the night. I was very, very hungry. Oh, it tasted so good. You have no idea what, what it means sometimes in the middle of the night when you're hungry like this. Now you have a little something to tide you over till breakfast. Mm. I just, it's one of my bad habits actually. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be up like this. But I get so hungry. to say this, but I look at a little olive like this. Mm. And it tastes wonderful. This has got a seed in it, but I like them pitted, too. And you don't have to worry about the stone. Mm. I swear I do this practically every night of the week. Not every night, but pretty near. I keep worrying that I'm gonna get fat. <laughs> Over the years, Jim Henson did experiment a lot, as that last clip clearly proved. However, he was very lighthearted in a lot of his other works. Ultimately, he wanted to entertain children, educate them, get them better, and ultimately that would lead down the road to Sesame Street. But before he could get to Sesame Street, he needed to play around a little bit. And this clip actually shows what would eventually grow into Sesame Street. The silliness is the kind of stuff you come to expect on the school ground. The clip is called I've Got You Under My Skin. This starts off being spoken as the rest of the Muppets repeat it in song. And in classic Muppet form, the main Muppet gets frustrated. You know what? I'm not going to ruin it for you. Check it out. the thing over. I'm sorry I lost it up. Let's start the thing over. La, 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 la. Ah! On top of the world. Over it went slow. Over it went slow. You're singing the wrong song. You're singing the wrong song. No, no, now you've ruined everything. He can. He can you under my skin. I sacrificed everything. Come make me say I'm here. I sacrifice anything. Come what's my for the sake. Boys, come tonight, or repeat, repeat, repeat. In spite of the warning, boys, that comes in the night and repeats and repeats in my heart. Oh,
from the B, ma'am. I'd like an omelet, a Western omelet. I'm sorry, but we didn't get a delivery of eggs this morning. The eggs we have are pretty old. Oh, well, they make the best sort of a Western omelet. You know what I mean? An adult Western. Are you a fan of westerns? Yes? No? Well, I'm gonna assume at least 50% of you said yes and the other 50% are like, eh, I like Muppets. <laughs> I'll put a poll in the corner right there. You guys let me know if uh, that's a thing you like or not. But despite all that, I think it's been proven time and again that Jim Henson's work can be funny over and over again, no matter what situation you put the Muppets in. But when you take into account that what I'm about to show you is one of his original works that he actually wrote himself and voiced most of the characters for, it puts it on a whole new level by itself, and why it's number two on my list. The story itself follows Marshall Dilley, who is, let's say, a less than courageous Marshall out in the Old West. And for a job that's that demanding, that kind of requires you to be a badass, <laughs> comical situations arise. I'm that man, Matt Tilly, U.S. Marshal. The first man they look for and the last I hope they find, blasted bill collectors. It's a chancy job, but I managed to stay fearless, brave, but always discreet. Marshal Dilly? Marshal Dilly? Who, who, who's there? Just me, Pester. Why, Marshal Dilly, what in the world are you doing under the desk? I was tying my shoelaces. Did you hear shooting just now? But you wear cowboy boots, Marshal Dilly. They don't have laces. It wasn't an easy job, Pester. You know that bunch of squares that came to town? Yeah. Well, go out and shoot them. Shoot them, Marshal Dilly? You can do it, Pester. You've always been a square shooter. Sheesh. The Cookie Monster. No, 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 I know he's a point of contention nowadays. Mainly because his name is the Cookie Monster, and he enjoys fruits and vegetables out of nowhere now. On one hand, people say that that's great because it teaches kids, hey, don't just eat cookies, eating sweets all day is going to make you fat and unhealthy. On the other hand, people like to argue that he's a monster. He eats whatever he wants, he's a monster, he doesn't abide with the same food pyramid the rest of us have to. And while I do have my own opinions on the situation, uh, it's not really something I want to get angry or riled about. Now, don't get me wrong, I'll get angry and riled up about a lot of other things, but this doesn't seem worth it. Now, why am I bringing him up? Well, you probably didn't know that his original design was a little bit less child-friendly and more on the sharp teeth, I'm gonna eat you kind of situation. So much so that he didn't even eat cookies, he ate anything that you put in front of him. And in his earliest appearance during this upcoming commercial, he's seen with less of his personality quirks and more of just a big eating machine. And the commercial itself, I mean admittedly, is pretty funny. Cookie Monster isn't the star of it, but it is one of his earliest appearance. And uh, I think that in itself makes it worth something. He's iconic. Outside of Elmo, Bert, and Ernie. I say he's one of the staples of childhood. It all started when I discovered wheels. You know, these wheel-shaped cheese-flavored snacks that taste so... Mmm. Cheese-flavored. Anyhow, I was fixing a tray of wheels when suddenly... I saw a wheel stealer. I am a wheel stealer. <laughs> and he ate up all my wheels. So then I fixed a tray of flutes, these flute-shaped snacks with a butternut flavor. But when I turned my back, a flute snatcher got them. The flute snatcher strikes again! So then I bought crowns, crown-shaped snacks with the scrumptious corn-roasted flavor. And I was enjoying their corny crunchiness when I realized the character on the TV screen was in reality a crown grabber. Crowns! So that's it, friends. When you eat wheels, 
flutes and crowns, you're going to meet wheel stealers, flute snatchers, and crown grabbers. But beware, they're very sneaky and have all kinds of disguises. Why, there may be some in your house right now. There's no arguing that Jim Henson didn't make a mark on the world. In a lot of ways, he's going to be remembered as a brilliant man. But I think what we can take away from this series, from anything he did originally, is that with time, we master our crafts. So if you are a struggling creator like myself, don't give up. Do what's making you happy. And hopefully other people will pick up on that. And if not, at the end of the day, you'll be happy with your work. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I will see you guys on the next video. Later, folks.